So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how I made this three planter, two bench system for only 26 bucks. Welcome back guys. And yes, you heard me right. I'm going to be teaching you how to make three of these planters as well as two benches for less than $30. So I recently ran across a design like this from a big box store that was wanting $1,800 for this five piece set. So why are they trying to sell something for $1,800 that I can build for less than 30. It's because in marketing, if you can build something that someone else cannot, then you can set pretty much any price that you want. Well, today we're gonna to change that. If you just wanted to make these planters, then just make the planters. You can build these for a little over six bucks a piece. And for those of you that are interested in building these planters or this system to sell, do not forget about staging. If you can get live plants to stage with, those are always the best. And if not, you can get artificial plants like this round bush thing. I'll call it a Bob Ross bush. You can get this Bob Ross bush and stage up your planters. So again, always keep in mind that you need to stage your items up. That way the customer can always envision what it will look like at their house or their setting. So this video is going to be broken down into two different sections. We're gonna start off by building this 18 by 18 planter, and then we will cover how to build the benches. And as always, I will be teaching you step-by-step step on how to build this entire system. But if you are a plans in the hand type of person, head over to my website and I'll have the plans for this entire system. Or if you're just interested in building these planters, I'll have the plans for those as well. And speaking of the website, make sure to look around. You're not only going to find plans, there's woodworking tips, there's success stories, there's blogs. And if you've been eyeing this super cool shirt that I'm wearing, then... You can also find that there. And for those of you that's followed the channel for some time, you know exactly what this statement is about. It's what this channel is about. It's having the confidence in yourself to look at something and say, I can build that, period. It's not, I wish I could build that, or maybe one day I could build that. It's, I can build that. It's a simple statement to remind yourself and to tell others that you have the confidence to achieve any goal that you set your mind to. So before I get all wound up and into one of my long life lesson talks, Let's go ahead and dive into this video. And again today for this video, we'll be having Ethan behind the camera in the shop with us. I got busted out in the last video because Ethan was not wearing proper PPE. So let's get that taken care of. I do not want PETA getting called on me. Do you mean OSHA? No. There's some safety glasses. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's not going to work. Change these out. Try that out. It might be a little better. And gotta go. These are the Gators Blast Shield, solid aluminum frames, ballistic lenses, and made by the same company that makes the eyewear that I wear and I wear that I wear. <laughs> the eyewear that I choose to wear in every one of my videos. Now we need some respiratory protection. And for that, we're gonna be using RZ's M3, looking like a ninja. And last but not least, we'll be using Axel's digital hearing protection that will still allow you to hear me make fun of you, but cut out any noise decibels that can injure your ears. So for this build, I'm gonna be using two by six material, two by eight material, two by 10, whatever that you would like to work with would work just fine. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, since this is a two by six, it's gonna have this rounded edge. I'll be removing one side of that. That way all of my parts match and are square. So the neat thing about this build is if you only want to build the planter, then you can just build one planter. Or if you want all three and two benches then you can do that or if you just wanted two planters and one bench all right so now that we have this edge trimmed off let's go ahead and head over to the miter saw and cut our parts to the length so for today's video i'll be teaching you how to make the planter and you can multiply that by how many ever you want to build as well as the bench so i'll be making a couple boards that are 20 inches long those will be for our legs one that is 53 inches long, that's going to be for the slats. And two boards that are 15 inches long for our horizontal boards or our panel tops and bottoms. So now with our material cut to length, let's go ahead and head back to the table saw and actually rip these down to specific sizes. So we're going to start off with our 20 inch boards. I'm going to set my table saw to an inch and a half. And for all of these parts, we'll make sure to put our square edge against the fence. So with the 20 inch boards, I'll be cutting four legs that are an inch and a half by an inch and a half by 20 inches long. And with our 53 inch board, I'll be cutting all of this into quarter inch slats. And no, the slats will not actually be 53 inches long. It's just going to make it easier to cut all of these at once and then stain or paint before you cut the length. The final dimension of each one of these slats are going to be a quarter of an inch by one inch by 13 inches long. So since I'm ripping all of this out of a board that's an inch and a half thick, once we get those cut, we'll set the saw to one inch and run them back through. Then for our two 15 inch boards, which are our panel tops and bottoms, we'll be ripping these down to one inch by one and a half by 15 inches long. We'll be needing eight of these. 
So with our top and bottom horizontal panel boards cut, it's going to be long to say every time I use them. Good old PV. <laughs> panel boards. So with the PV boards cut. <laughs> like it ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> so with our top and bottom panel boards cut, now we need to cut a notch for our slats to fit in. So since our slats would be a quarter of an inch thick, we'll cut a quarter of an inch notch on the very center of the board. This is going to take three passes. I'll start off by lowering my blade to a height of a half of an inch because I want each one of my notches to be a half of an inch deep. And then I'll set the fence to five eighths of an inch. With the notch being a half of an inch deep, I'll make sure to cut each one of my slats at 13 inches long, giving me a half of an inch support on each side and 12 inches of the slats will still be exposed. So I'll make my first pass and then simply flip the board around and make a second pass. And after our first two passes, this is what it'll look like. So while the saw is set up, up, I'll repeat this step for the remaining boards. So if you're wondering what type of finish would be best to seal untreated wood, I would recommend teak oil. Teak oil will not only help to protect your wood from the sun and the weather, but it also helps you bring out the beautiful natural colors of the wood. So with the outside cuts on all of our boards, we just need to get rid of the small sliver still in the middle. So let's go ahead and set our saw to a half of an inch and knock that out. For the slats, I'll set the fence up at a quarter of an inch and make those cuts. After that's done, let's reset this fence to one inch and run these strips back through. And this is what we want. I actually cut my notch just a little thick. That way that the slats would slide in and out. And the only reason why I did that is to make assembly just a little bit easier. Now, the only thing left to do before we actually start assembling all this is to get our strips cut down to 13 inches. So each one of our side panels will need 12 slats. I'm gonna go ahead and separate these out. And these will just be extras. In case one of them splits or you have a big knot right in the middle, anything like that, you can just replace it with one of these. And if you don't use them, you have paint sticks. So this next step is going to be optional. I'm actually going to put a decorative top on this. If you choose to do this, measure in one inch from an end on all four sides. So then at your miter saw, let's go ahead and set it up to bevel. Let's move our fence out and then we will set our bevel to 35 degrees. And while we're doing this, let's go ahead and move our outer fence out as well. By sliding this side of the fence out of the way, what it's going to do is as this material is coming off, it'll keep it from hitting the fence, bouncing back into the blade and becoming a sharp projectile. So I was curious and I looked up how many people watching were actually subscribed to the channel. And only 29.3% of people watching right now are actually subscribed. If you enjoy the channel, what you're watching, or taking anything away from it, then do me a favor and support the channel by hitting my logo or the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. And while I'm making this cut, just a friendly reminder to check out our Patreon community. It has grown to be so much more than I have ever expected and I love it. So if you're interested in learning what the Patreon community is all about, I'll throw a link in the description. We would love to have you. So with all of your parts cut, now will be the time to paint stain or do whatever that you would like with them. By doing this step now, it will save you a ton of time and headache in the long run. For my planners, I'm gonna do all of the trim pieces in black and then I will stain all of my slats. So once you have all of your parts painted or stained or whatever that you're wanting to do with them, the next step is going to be to make this simple jig. So you know how I am whenever it comes to jigs. Anything that would make a repetitive job faster, I'm in. So for this jig, I just made it out of a scrap piece of plywood. I actually took some of the scrap edges from our project piece and then just laid all of this out at 90 degrees. That way we had a solid side and base to assemble against. And this is just going to keep you from chasing your parts around while you're trying to put all of this together. So we're going to start by assembling our side walls. So for this, we're going to need some wood glue. And I'll be using three quarters of an inch brad nails as well. I'm going to go ahead and take my parts and lay them out into kits. It'll be a top and bottom board and a set of the slats. We're going to start each one of these side panels by taking our top and bottom boards, facing them with a notch up, and placing a bead of exterior wood glue all the way down. Once we have our wood glue in place, let's go ahead and install our slats. And to help get my spacing for this, I'm just going to take a couple of quarter of an inch boards just to help hold these up. And for this step, we're just getting our slats into the grooves, and then we will evenly space these. And this is another set of jigs that I've cut. Each one of these are a quarter of an inch because I want quarter of an inch spacing between each one of my slats. Anything that you're using as a jig, just take a marker 
You make a little design that's actually an S, and that way you do not get it confused with any of your other parts. If you're planning on making a set, you're going to need an 11. Once you have all of your slats into place, go ahead and squeeze your two rails together and make sure that it is flat against each side of your jig. I'll measure each end and it should read 15 inches. Once you get that, you're ready for some brad nails. I'll be placing these nails about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the board, and really they're just to hold these slats into place while the glue dries. So now that those nails are in, go ahead and remove these spacers, move on to our next one while the glue is drying. And now we'll just put the other three together. After you put a few of these together, you'll learn a couple of tricks that will make these things go together super quick. Once you have all of your side panels assembled, the only thing left to do is to attach them to your legs. And there's several different ways that you can do this. You can use dowels in the ends, and I will not be gluing these to my legs. I'm gonna be using pocket hole screws. And the reason why I chose this type of joinery is that it does not require glue. And I wanted to make this so you could actually disassemble. Is it disassemble or unassemble? I don't know, actually. This? Disassemble? Unassemble? So you could disassemble or unassemble whatever. <laughs> Take apart. Yeah, take apart. So you can take this thing apart at the end of the season and store it away. So to cut these pocket holes, I'm gonna be using Craig 720 Pro. I'll be placing two on each end centered with the board. So to do this without getting into my brad nails, I'll be using the two pocket hole guides that are closest together. From outside to outside, that'll place these holes one inch apart. And I'll be placing my pocket holes on the same side as I did my brad nails. That way we can face all of those inward and have a nice clean outside. And in case you're wondering, I have the depth stop collar set at one inch. So now that we have our pocket holes drilled, since I want to be able to take these things apart, I'm actually going to paint the insides of my pockets black. If you're planning on leaving this thing together, I would just put my screws in and then install some painted pocket hole plugs. So now let's attach our panels to our legs, and I'll be using the jig for this. And if your piece of scrap wood that you've originally made your jig out of isn't long enough, you'll just need another piece just to support the ends of your legs. So speaking of jig, We'll be using another one for this. Now again, this is completely optional, but we will be needing two and one quarters of an inch spacing from the bottom of our leg to the bottom of our side panel. So you can measure each one of these if you would like, or take a piece of scrap, cut it at two and a quarters of an inch, and then just put it at the bottom of your jig. That way I can just place it on the bottom, bring my panels down, and then I know that I'm at the spacing that I want. And the next jigs I'm gonna be using, remember the extra cutoff strips I told you to hang on to earlier? You can actually use those as a jig for this step. So I want this panel centered with my leg. My leg is an inch and a half thick, and my panel is only one inch thick. So I need a quarter of an inch spacing on each side. Since our slats are a quarter of an inch, these work perfect. So I'll just lay these underneath of my panel. And if I'm making several of these, I would actually glue those into place. But just by using scrap wood to make a quick jig, from this point on, you won't have to do any more measuring. So with everything in place in my jig, I'll be installing two and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Now you can see where everything is starting to come together. So now that we have all four legs installed to two of our panels, let's go ahead and attach the remaining two. And for this, we'll be using the same two and a quarter of an inch spacing. Mmm, screwed up. I can't say screwed up. Can I say screwed up? Surely. Using pocket hole screws. Yeah, that's a total pocket hole reference. And it actually involved the screws. Okay, so if you look at what I did here, or what I did not do, and this is where I messed up. I did not put my quarter of an inch jig back in. I actually attached this flush with the outside. Don't do that. Good thing they're screws and pop them right back out. And don't forget to use your spacing jigs for your side walls as well. And for the last panel, I'll just place it on my jig and then what I have assembled on top of it. So if you're just gonna be building one of these, then you're pretty much done, unless you would like to place a bottom in this. I won't be putting bottoms in mind for this bench system because most of the time they are going to be placed on a porch of some kind. You'll be using plants that are already potted, you know, like bushes or little fancy trees. But if you'd like to put a bottom in this, it's all that you would have to do is install some cross slats or a liner. But since I'm not, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out a couple more of these babies and then move on to the bench. So now that all the planters are done, let's go ahead and make our benches. So for the benches, I'm going to be using two by sixes as well. Like we did for the planters, one of the first steps that I'm going to do to this material is remove this rounded edge. So for each one of these benches, we're going to be needing six boards that are one inch by an inch and a half by 50 inches long, two boards that are one inch by an inch and a half by 47 and a half inches long, 
and then two boards that are one inch by an inch and a quarter by 47 and a half inches long. The two boards that'll be an inch and a quarter, I'm gonna go ahead and rip those just like I am the rest of the boards. And then I'll reset my saw and take off that extra quarter of an inch. That's all of my materials ripped down. I'm gonna go ahead and cut everything to the length. I'll need six boards that are 50 inches long and four boards that are 47 and a half. And if you are going to paint or stain this, the four boards that are 47 and a half inches will be the outer frame. The six 50 inch boards will be the center. I match my planters. I've painted my outside boards black and for the inside boards I've used the same stain as my slats and if you're curious on what that is I'm really not for sure how to pronounce it Ips Ipswich I'm Ipswich Ipswich pine you saw it <laughs> I don't know how to say it so the boards that are painted black, the reason why they're shorter, are actually going to be in line with the trim of our planter. And then the boards that will make our seat will actually be setting on top of the rail of the planter. Kind of laid things out so you can kind of see what it's going to look like. And there are two parts that I forgot to mention earlier that you should have the extra material for. And that's going to be cross slats. These will actually go across the bottom of your bench you know, to kind of tie everything together. And for these, I just used the extra material from the slats, and these will be 15 and a half inches long each. But before we get to installing these, I'm gonna do one more thing to my side rails, and that's gonna be taking these two side rails that are an inch and a half wide, and putting pocket holes in the ends of each one of these. And you'll see in a minute, but what that's going to allow this to do is actually fasten to your bench. Now this step is optional, but I just wanted to put it in there for you. The weight of the bench will actually hold itself into place. Pocket holes would just be if you wanted to lock everything together. So once the pocket holes are installed in our sideboards, let's go ahead and attach our inch and a quarter sideboards to the inch and a half sideboards. So to do that, I'm going to set the board with the pocket holes on its edge, and then I'm going to add wood glue to the top. And again, this is exterior wood glue. And then I'll place my inch and a quarter board on top with the edge closest to me lining up flush. This will leave a quarter of an inch of overhang on the inside. And we'll just repeat this step for our second rail. So now that we have our two side parts put together, we are going to lay the bench out upside down. So for the side pieces, the side with the pocket holes will actually face in. Then our inch and a quarter top board, it's going to be facing down. And we'll set that up for both sides. Now in this step, we're going to be attaching everything together. So now comes our spacing. In between each one of our slats, we are going to leave a one inch gap. And then in between our outer slats and our sideboards, a half of an inch gap. So to help me with this, of course, I'm going to make some jigs, but these are just scrap pieces from the project. Yes, you can measure all of this stuff out, but if you have these little scrap pieces laying around from the project that you're working on, use them. For each half inch gap, I'm just using two of these slats from our planters that were a quarter of an inch. Then for the one inch spacing, I'm just using cutoffs from the slats themselves. Another thing that will come in super handy whenever you're lining all of this out is just a straight edge. So let's start off by getting all of our spacers in place. All right, so now that we have our spacers in place, let's make sure that all of our slat boards are square to each other. And then the last thing that I'm gonna to do to lay out this spacing is to leave an inch and a quarter gap from both of our outside rails to our straight edge. So now your bench layout should look like this. The only thing left to do is to tie it all together using these 15 and a half inch boards that we cut earlier. And for these slat supports, I'm gonna be spacing them 12 inches from each end. Once you get everything into place, just to keep these parts from moving around, go ahead and throw a couple of clamps on. So now that I have everything put together, of course, now I remember I forgot one little step, and that is to cut pocket holes in the ends of our two 15 and a half inch spacers. Let me do that real quick. Okay, so now that I have everything in place, let's go ahead and attach everything. I'm gonna start off by attaching our two spacers to our sideboard using an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. Once those are installed, I'm gonna pre-drill and counter bore my slat supports and then fasten the bench slats to the supports using an inch and a quarter screws. Since I already have pocket hole screws out, I'll be using those. And if you're wondering about the handy little tool that I'm using, it's Craig's Quick Flip. So with one tool, you can pre-drill and counter bore at the same time. And to set the depth of your bit, you'll use the Allen that's on the back of the tool to loosen the bit and adjust it to whatever depth that you would like. And then whenever you're ready to put in your screws, you just flip the bit over, lock it down, and you're ready to go. So our bench is assembled. So let's take these clamps off and see how it works. And there we have it. And to be honest, this project actually turned out better than I thought. The only thing left to do, if you wanted, would be to attach this bench to your planters using the pocket hose that we drilled earlier. And then if you wanted to make the three planter two bench system, then you would just make another bench identical to this one. And now that that's over, 
Time for me to take a nap. Back to work. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and saw just how easy it is to build something like this. And if you haven't taken anything else away from this video, take that with you, that you can build that. Carry the mindset that you can do anything that you put your mind to, not just in your woodworking journey, but in life in general. Till next time, guys, we'll see ya. It's disassembled. It's disassembled? Yeah, unassembled isn't even a word. <laughs> unassembled's not a word. That's a lesson for today. You learn all kinds of stuff on this channel. <laughs> One thing is never listen to Ethan. Oh no, yeah. Unassembled isn't work. To be continued. Dun dun dun.